Hello NYWCites and welcome to another DVD review as this time it will be NYWC Rampage which took place back on June 24th 2006. I attended this show myself and uh, let's get on with it shall we? Um, Re-announcer at the time Nick Vrona is welcoming the crowd and he's going over some of the matches for the show but then he's interrupted by Dan Dynasty who takes the microphone microphone and he says you know two months ago i faced mikey whipwreck and you know he put me through a table he threw fire at me and he says i got to the building tonight i noticed i'm not on the show and i know it was mikey whipwreck's not on the show and he challenged whipwreck to come on out and find him and whipwreck comes out and they dynasty meets him at the ramp and eventually whipwreck uh clotheslines dynasty into the ring and the matches, I don't know if the bell rang before or after that happened, but eventually they they take it out to the floor and Dynasty grabbed a drink from one of the fans and threw it at Whipwreck. Um, a table was put in plate, was placed uh, to bridge the guardrail. A table was bridging, was placed between the guardrail and the ring, and the ring apron. Whipwreck tried to put, D Dynasty was on the table, Whipwreck leaped, but Dynasty moved out of the way. Whipwreck crashed and burned through the table. Uh, Whipwreck, uh, hit like what seemed to be a, like a swing version of his whipper snapper, but out came the late Crusher Dugan, and he says, hey, Mikey, and distracted him, and I think the referee was, might have been checking on Dynasty at the time, because another table had been brought into play, and Whipwreck was down, Dickie Rods came out, hits the pocket rocket, which we, which many know as the famous, sir, and Whipwreck's throat got caught on the, uh, the, ta the steel table legs, and then Rods and uh, uh, Dugan were holding Whipwreck on the table. Dynasty did a top rope splash, whipped Whipwreck through the table, and pinned him to win the match. Um, Dynasty got the victory. And then um, eventually NYWC's founding father, John Curse, and, and Shane, they come out and help Whipwreck from the ring. Next up was tag team action, as we saw... The in-ring debuts of Bruno Marciano and Benny Martinez against the debuting tag team known as The Stroke. I apologize for not getting their individual names. Now, as I said, this was Bruno and Benny's in-ring debut because months earlier, Bruno Marciano was brought was introduced as Prince Charles's personal bodyguard, and that same night, Benny Martinez was introduced as the personal referee of. Uh, Brett Matthews, a.k.a. Matt Cardona, and Brian Myers. Um, I, I have to say, and I, I, all apologies to all four of these men, because while I was there, I was not thrilled. Didn't seem like these teams did not click too well. Granted, it was Bruno and Benny's in-ring debut, and the Strokes' NYWC debut. Uh, Bruno and Benny got the win when Benny schoolboyed one of them and got the pinfall and that was the last first and only time the stroke ever appeared the stroke never came back to nywc and i don't think the crowd seemed too thrilled either while i was there and while i was uh watching the dvd but i mean bruno, to bruno and benny's credit as time went on they both got better bruno wound up high five champion uh benny had great matches with alex reynolds years later so it worked out for those two but the stroke never returned up next was a bit of a grudge match as we saw Mana, the Polynesian warrior, accompanied to the ring by the sure thing John Shane, set to take on Havoc. Now, the previous month's show, Mana debuted and he committed murder and a half on Oscar. And after the match, there was chaos where John Shane took the microphone and he called out Papa Don, who was sitting in the crowd. Uh, and Mana attacked. Papa Don and Havoc came out and he brought with Mana and security had to break it up. But this time they had a match and this was Havoc's in-ring return to NYWC after being not being on shows in months. And John Shane took the microphone while Mana's standing on the apron and he and John Shane says to, to, um, to Havoc, oh, I know you're standing behind that curtain, you're shaking. But Havoc, I guess, came through the crowd and he attacks John Shane in the ring and then the match with he and Mana go at it. Well, yeah, Havoc attacks John Shane before the bell even rang. Eventually, these two went into the crowd and had quite a brawl. Uh, well, 
Havoc um, reversed an Irish whip and Mana was thrown into a bunch of chairs. I guess new meaning to the term, going to the chair. Or in this case, the chairs. Um, Havoc, um, let me see, wow. Havoc, uh, while still on the floor, he speared Mana into the guardrail, but the guardrail didn't break. Havoc hits Mana with a Savoan drop. But John Shane, I think, came up to the apron, distracted Havoc, and then Mana hits his own Samoan drop, and Mana pinned Havoc to pick up the victory. And <laughs> after the uh, match, John Shane looks at the crowd and says, who's a now? He didn't use a certain F word, it was a certain H word, which I'm sure is not okay to use anymore, folks. Okay, our next matchup, we saw superstar Dickie Rods accompanied the ring by the late Crusher Dugan as he went one-on-one -on -one with Maverick. Maverick, who we know is later became the premier athlete, Tony Nese, who's now practically Mr. 205 in WWE. Um, mat the match started, and eventually at one point, uh, Maverick, he missed uh, some kind of f dive off the second rope into the crowd. I don't know if he slipped as he jumped or something happened. He like ended up in the front row behind the guardrail and amongst the chaos, somebody yelled, clean up an aisle six. And uh, they eventually went back to the ring. Rods countered as a power, countered, as a, um, no, countered Hurricane Rana with a power bomb. Maverick hit a nice springboard drop kick off the top rope. Rods hit it. Retaliated with a fireman carry to a gut buster. Maverick hit the uh, kill switch, or the unprettier, the move that uh, Christian Cage is known for, but of course it was invented by the late Tommy Rogers of the Fantastics, which he called the Tamikaze. But I think Rods had his foot on the rope and that prevented the pinfall from happening. Maverick hits his 450, 450 splash from the top rope, but Rods actually kicks out. Rods eventually gets the win with a schoolboy roll-up with his feet on the ropes to defeat Maverick. Next up, we have tag team action as Billy and Danny Angus, accompany the ring by Prince Charles, come to the ring and Prince Charles introduces Ahmad Jihad Akbar. That's a mouthful. But of course, I already knew him as uh, Eddie Guapo, who was trained at the LIWF Doghouse. Guapo was doing like a Muslim or Arab type character here. And he took the microphone. I don't remember what he said, but the crowd was chanting, where's my Slurpee? I've never had a Slurpee in my life, folks. I don't know how good they are. Um, so after that promo, Akbar, Charles, and the Anguses, they huddle, they huddle up, and then their, their opponents are introduced. And they're none other than Joey Brajol, who later became the demonic juggernaut Apollyon, and Mega, way before he was king. Uh, among the highlights in this match, Mega grabs both Angus brothers and gives them a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Almost said sandwich, my God. <laughs> All apologies. Uh, Mega and Brajol each hit a, spl a splash on each Angus brother. Uh, Brajol hit one Angus with a full Nelson slam. At one point, I believe, uh, Akbar came up to the apron, distracting Mega when he had one of the Anguses. Uh, Prince Charles hits Brajol with a chair. Uh, Akbar actually got hold of the, time, the, the, the timekeeper's bell, hits Mega from behind, and then one of the Anguses hits a jumping reverse DDT on Mega and pinned him to win the match. Okay. Next up was uh, singles action as Stockade went up against... Doink the Clown, which I'm sure was Ray or Phil Apollo. <sighs> These two, I'm sorry. I mean, Doink at the beginning of the, just the match was like, before getting underway, Doink used his, squirted water out of his flower at Stockade. Uh, the match eventually gets underway, and Doink did like a baseball slide through Stockade's legs, and he literally kicked Stockade in his ass. And then he took a page out of the Bushwhackers playbook and he bit Stockade in the ass. So a little late lunchtime there. Uh, I don't know. These two just did not click in their match, unfortunately. Doink wound up winning with the whoopee cushion, which is the sit-down splash from the top rope. 
and uh, I know that they did go to intermission at that point in the show. They eventually start the second half of the show with a triple threat match as we see the debuting Teddy Fine, uh, the in-ring return of Papa Don, and Spider. Uh, uh, Teddy Fine carried like a, a spray bottle of the ring and people were chanting water boy at him. Eventually, Papa Don hits uh, hits Fine with a Yakuza kick. Fine hit a, a very good pump handle backbreaker on Spider. That the match came to an end when Spider nailed a hit a wicked brain buster and then hit a slingshot 450 splash from the top rope on the Teddy Fine and Spider was victorious over Teddy Fine and Papa Don and this was the only time Teddy unless I'm wrong the only time Teddy Fine appeared in NYWC. Next up was a singles matchup. We had the debuting Jamie Van Lemer against Plasma. Plasma later went to the WWE as Trent Beretta, and he's simply known as Trent in the best friends in all elite wrestling right now. Uh, when the, the moment Van Lemer came through the curtain, fans were chanting, you are gay, Adam. Some were even chanting, flamer, Adam. Probably another word it's not okay to use anymore. Uh, eventually, the match got underway. Plasma was doing Van Lemer suplex, but they were too close to the ropes, and they both fell over the top rope out to the floor. Lemur hit a top rope elbow drop, a la the late Macho Man Randy Savage, yeah! I'm not going to hurt my throat impersonating him and rest his soul. Eventually the end came when Plasma hit the Dude Buster, I think that's what he calls it, and he pinned Van Lemur to get the victory. Next up was a three-way intergender match, as we see Ken Scampi and Foxy Foxy versus Dan Barry and Alicia, versus Damian Dragon and Tara Charisma. At, pretty much at the sound of the bell, Barry super kicks Scampy. Uh, Barry did a uh, surfboard slash curb stop onto Damian. Alicia and Tara had a slap fest with Scampy, and eventually Tara gave Scampy a German suplex. Tara, Alicia, and Foxy had a three-way cat fight with each other. Uh, Damien hit a top rope elbow drop on Scampy. Uh, something must have went wrong in this match because it looked to me like Scampy bled out of by his nose or his mouth. Uh, the end came when Scampy low blowed uh, Barry and he hit some kind of s scoop. He, he scooped Barry upside down into a DDT and... Scampy and Foxy were victorious over Dan Barry and Alicia and Damian Dragon and Tara Charisma. Next up is a match for the Interstate Championship as Josh Daniels challenged Javier. Uh, in the early going, Javier hits a springboard moonsault off the second rope, but Josh kicked out. Javi hits a, Later in the match, Javi hit a springboard lung blower off the top rope. Javi hit a double, knee, a double running knee strike. Uh, Javi nailed Josh with his with a senton from the top rope, but Josh kicked out of that. Josh hit a tiger suplex. Javi kicked out of that. Josh Daniels hit a lariato clothesline. Javi kicked out of that. Josh eventually defeats Javier when he reversed the momentum of a high of a flat top rope body press. Javier did, and Josh pins Javier to become the new interstate champion. Now, up next, we were set to see um, the, the BS Express, Tony Burma and Mike Spinelli, accompanied to the ring by Crusher Dugan, take on the dead presidents, Low Rider and Boogaloo, or as they were known as, Low Lincoln and Boog Washington. Before the match is underway, Tony Burma gets the microphone and introduces the BS Express fraternity. And Tony Burma says, you guys... Your your first your first it says your first job or assignment is to take our place in this match with the dead presidents. Now the BS Express fraternity was a one night thing apparently. It consisted of J T Tackleberry, who later was one of, was a casein of the Dirty Rednecks and member of Reckless and Wasted. Uh, Oscar, Bruno Marciano, Benny Martinez. Unless I'm mistaken, the other two were Brian Vitko and Joe Etel. And 
I don't think we really there, there was really a winner in this, but the dead presidents they they did a number on these these poor guys and weapons and, and all. And uh, unfortunately, while watching the DVD, it was getting messed up. So, you know, I really couldn't remember how this all ended, but I don't think there was really a winner. But then it was time for the main event as uh, Jerry Lynn, who was the high fi champion at the time, was set to challenge Matt LSD Heisen, a.k.a. Spike Dudley, who for the NYWC championship. Well, right before, right after Lynn came to the ring, Dickie Rods came out and talked about what happened um, the previous show where Rods was the last one eliminated from the Battle Royal and where Heisen became the champion. Uh, Heisen eventually came out and I forgot what he said on the microphone. And unfortunately, thanks to the, I don't know if it's the disc itself because I hadn't watched this DVD in ages or the damn DVD player messing up. <sighs> Um, can't remember what else happened to this match because I was there live. Um, Mikey Whipwreck eventually came out. He wanted to go after Dickie Rods for costing him his match with Dan Dynasty at the beginning of the show. And phew, I forgot he accidentally attacked, hit Jerry or he accidentally hit Heisen. And Dickie Rods eventually scored the pinfall, defeating Heisen and Jerry Lynn to become the NYWC champion which began Dickie Rods' third and final reign, which actually lasted just over a, lasted over a year. What I do remember being there live is phew, that show ended way past 11 o'clock, and as soon as that final pinfall took place, I got out of the Deer Park Community Center and called a cab already because I didn't want to wait, be stuck waiting for, for the next train for like after that for over an hour. But nonetheless, folks, this was a very good show despite... You know, some people not clicking with each other in their matches. Uh, there'll be more DVD reviews in the future. NYWC still rules.